we're going to talk about normal sagittal balance. Again, more information than you probably can understand initially, but it makes a lot of sense if you use a diagram. A side view of the spine here shows the pelvis, the hip, knee, and ankle and foot. There are three curves in the spine. The lumbar spine has a lordosis. The thoracic spine, where the ribs attach, has a kyphosis, and the cervical spine has another lordosis. That puts your head directly over your pelvis so that you're balanced and it doesn't take a lot of muscle contraction to stand upright. There are patients who are born or who develop an increased thoracic kyphosis, either through a condition called Schurman's or a condition called a degenerative kyphosis. And this is what they have to deal with. And again, the normal pelvis, the normal leg, and then a normal lumbar spine, and then I'm going to increase the thoracic spine curve and a normal cervical curve, and now this person is unfortunately out of balance where his center of gravity is much more forward than where his pelvis is, and he has to use a lot of muscular contraction just to stand upright. These patients can compensate for this particular problem by increasing the lumbar lordosis and increasing this cervical lordosis because we know that this curve is already fixed. And this is how they do it. They increase their lumbar lordosis. Their thoracic kyphosis is a big curve, but they increase their cervical lordosis, and now they are looking normally straight ahead. And they're balanced. But what they're doing is they're increasing the curve in the lumbar spine and in the cervical spine, and that can prematurely wear out the joints in these two areas.